It is almost time for Iowans to have their say on who should be president. In just eight days, Iowa Republicans will caucus and set the course for the 2024 GOP nomination and the final chance for the candidates to prove themselves to in the first in the nation caucus state. Even former President Donald Trump has been crisscrossing Iowa this weekend to make sure his supporters have his back. But his appearances have once again put the spotlight on his rhetoric and viability as a general election candidate. CNN's Elena Treen has been following Trump on the campaign trail. She joins us from Des Moines. Elena, what has Trump's tone been throughout this weekend? Yeah, well, Manu, uh, the former president has really uh, spent this weekend delivering his closing arguments to Iowa voters in the final week before the January 15th caucuses. And a key part of that message has been warning voters not to get complacent and to assume that Trump has Iowa in the bag just because he is up so high in the polls. And uh, I can tell you, Manu, from my conversations with Trump's advisors, that this is a bit of a concern from them. A key part of their ground game strategy here in the state has really been focusing on turning out out as many caucus goers as they can. And so we've seen them really issue a lot of presentations trying to teach Iowa's, uh, Iowans how to caucus. But I also want to point your attention to something I found really interesting. And it came up during his remarks in Newton, Iowa yesterday. He uh, vowed to find an alternative to Obamacare if elected in 2024. And as part of those remarks, he criticized the late Senator John McCain and blamed him for Republicans' failure to repeal and replace the law in 2017. And part of that delivery, uh, Trump mocked McCain's injuries. Take a listen to what he said. We're going to fight for much better health care than Obamacare. Obamacare is a catastrophe. Nobody talks about it. You know, without John McCain, we would have had it done. But John McCain, for some reason, couldn't get his arm up that day. Remember, he goes that like that. That was the end of that. Now, Manu, we, of course, need to point out that McCain uh, sustained a series of injuries while serving in the Vietnam War, and many of those stemmed from his time as a prisoner of war uh, for five years. But look, I think the broader context of these remarks is really interesting to know. Trump has really revived talk of trying to find an alternative to Obamacare in recent months, and it's something that has alarmed a lot of Republicans. People in the party are still scarred by their failure uh, to dismantle the law while Trump was in office, and they view this issue as a political loser. But of course, Trump is not heeding that advice and still talking about it on the campaign trail. Yeah, and mocking the late John McCain, who of course voted against repealing Obamacare because they didn't have a replacement for Obamacare at the time. Some mm -hmm. facts there for the former president, Elena right. Train from Des Moines. Thank you. And let's break this all down with my great panel this morning, Sungmin Kim from the Associated Press, Jackie Kucinich from the Boston Globe, and Isaac Arnsdorf from the Washington Post, who's the author of the upcoming book, finish what we started, the MAGA movement's ground war to end democracy. I look forward to re reading that. Thank, Thank you. you guys for joining us. It's, it's, a, it's a busy, consequential morning, and uh, Donald Trump has been busy as well, as we heard from Elena, going all across the state. And as Trump does when he appears before audiences, he says controversial, eyebrow-raising claims. And one of the things was about the Civil War from this week. We know this whole hour will go through the different parts of his comments, but one of the things we're going to talk about right now is the Civil War because this has become an issue suddenly in the Republican primary after Nikki Haley failed to say slavery was the reason for the Civil War. She tried to clean it up at the CNN town hall last week. She stepped in at some more. Donald Trump yesterday, too, was talking about the Civil War and made some curious comments that may have historians scratching their heads. I was uh, reading something, and... I said, this is something that could have been negotiated, you know? It was just for all those people to die, and they died viciously. That was a vicious, vicious war. And uh, in many ways, look, they're all this, nothing nice about it, but boy, that was a, that was a tough one for our country. But I think it's, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln. Of course, if you negotiated it, you probably wouldn't even know who Abraham Lincoln was. Okay, so if he negotiated the Civil War, we don't have to get into the history of the Civil War and the Missouri Compromise and the fact that the Civil War ultimately uh, uh, happened because of the fact that slavery was still happening in southern states. But look, the larger point is about Trump's comments, and voters are now starting to tune in. Perhaps this may not matter in a primary, but when we get into the general election, how much are Trump's words going to matter? Or are voters just, are these kind of things just baked in among the electorate? 
I think the thing that's striking is just how backward looking, I mean, so backward that we're talking about the Civil War, but how backward looking this campaign has been so far, relitigating January 6th, relitigating Obamacare, relitigating his feud with John McCain years after John McCain had passed away. I mean, it is, it's just constantly looking to what happened rather than looking forward. And, and elections tend to be about what's next not what just happened. Yeah, and like that's one of the points that DeSantis himself has been trying to make. This is the issue, and you know, others too, that this Trump is focused on the past, this is about the future. Let's talk about just like the nature of this race and the significance of what's gonna happen a week from Monday is about the uh, margin of victory here that if Trump, if polls are correct, Trump is headed to a likely victory in, in Iowa. We'll see, voters of course will have their ultimate say, polls don't cast votes, but the margin of victory is significant here because if Trump does win by a significant amount, what does that mean for a Haley or DeSantis, in particular DeSantis, who has put all of his eggs essentially in the Iowa basket? Right, and especially after in the last several weeks, you've heard a lot of stories about his campaign and his related super PAC being in shambles. He really does have to show that in Iowa that he comes in a strong second and try to really blunt, particularly Nikki Haley's momentum as they headed to New Hampshire, which is a state where Nikki Haley has put a lot of focus in terms of providing that momentum for the campaign. And I do think the recent tactics from Ron DeSantis have been really interesting. If you're talking about in the last maybe five days or so, he really actually has been going hard after Trump in a way that we haven't seen before. I think it really started with the CNN town halls on Wednesday night, and you're where he said, um, of course, uh, Trump isn't pro or Trump isn't pro life trying to get at that uh, segment of the Republican electorate. Said, of course not, he's not pro-life. Right, right, right. And he was, uh, you know, when he was campaigning in Iowa over the weekend, he talked about how while in 2016 he may have campaigned on America first, but now this is Trump first. That's actually pretty personal for mm. a guy who has been so unwilling to go after mm. the former president, probably because he doesn't want to anger supporters. And it shows you he's kind of trying everything to really grab that strong second uh, place position ahead of the 15th caucus. Yeah, you are seeing the more, more direct attacks. We'll see if it has any difference here. You wrote about uh, Trump's campaign, Isaac, uh, for the Washington Post about uh, just everything that he's been doing. This is the headline on the screen from your, your piece from a couple of days ago, how Trump reignited his base and took control of the Republican primary. He has been very active in Iowa, despite the, what the polls are saying, that he is the strong front runner. Just in the last couple of days, you can see he's crisscrossed the state uh, across Iowa for cities in two days. You, how different is this campaign effort from the past two efforts? Well, he's really still not campaigning in Iowa that month. I mean, he was there this weekend. He'll be there next weekend. In between, he's going to sit in on the oral arguments here in Washington for the appeal of his cl uh, claim of presidential immunity. Um, so this is not like 2016, where it was multiple rallies every day. He's not putting in that kind of time. And arguably, it's because he doesn't need to, if you look at the polls. Uh, it's also, you know, it's harder when you're the former president and you have a much larger Secret Service footprint. Mm -hmm. um, but the campaign has really found that they, they, the traditional Trump rally is kind of more and more a, a, a throwback. And I mean, do you think if the vote, Iowa voters, you know, they like that retail politician politicking, which Trump doesn't do. He doesn't do the town halls. Do they, do they care about it as the former president just doing the rallies out there? Um, they have been trying to put him in, into smaller settings and these unplanned stops where he'll, you know, drop in at a diner or something like that. And he has been doing more of working the rope line. And that's actually something that the campaign has been playing up hmm. because he's a lot stronger in those settings, to be frank about it, than DeSantis is the contrast that they're trying to draw. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And look, is DeSantis and Haley have been trying to draw the contrast to Trump in the recent days, as you are just mentioning, some of the criticism has blown back on Nikki Haley herself. She has had a couple of uh, unfortunate episodes, <laughs> if you're in the Nikki Haley camp, one about slavery, one about talking about how Iowa, uh, she said that Iowa starts the, the caucus, then New Hampshire fixes it, then she tried to clean it up, and there's been questions about some cleanup, her comments, but this is how she tried to uh, walk those back. Saying that I had black friends is a source of pride. Saying that I had white friends is a source of pride. Iowa starts it. You change personalities, you go into New Hampshire, and they continue it on. And by the time it gets to South Carolina, it gets bigger going into Super Tuesday. There's something very cool about the process.
you're an Iowa native. <laughs> how, how do they feel about that? Well, do, do you change personalities? <laughs> Are you supposed to? That, I mean, that's kind mm -hmm. of, if you're talking about authenticity, I mean, that's been kind of one of uh, Nikki Haley's, what her critics have said about the lack thereof of that. But no, I mean, not as, as an Iowan, you should never insult Iowans. But also, while the Perhaps not the best way to right, get their right. votes. Right, right. You can't, uh, it just, you are actively campaigning in Iowa, the last I checked when it comes to Nikki Haley. So you really, she is still trying to get Iowan support in the caucuses. Um, it, if you look at her initial comments, it didn't seem like it was a gaffe or an unforced error. She really was trying to get a laugh or some reaction out of that New Hampshire audience. Um, but it's just, it's a, a lot of these little errors or mistakes have kind of mounted for her in recent days. Now, how that stacks up um, and whether that ultimately matters at the end of the day, because Donald Trump has such a commanding lead, if you look at polling in the early states, we'll see. But it really has punctured that image of this really disciplined campaigner yeah. that we've seen from Nikki Haley over the past several and months. And they've tried to use the candidate that is questioning her viability as a general election candidate. We'll see if that works. We'll see if it matters.